I don't want to do it, but I have to. We've got another firm that's suspending operations. We've also got Fidelity putting in some ETF action for Bitcoin. We're also going to talk about XLM. It's above 10 cents right now. Is this the new floor? Will we go sub 10? Will this be the rallying point? Starting it off with the heat map where XLM right now clinging on to 10 cents, 10.1, down 1.4 last 24 hours. More importantly though, XLM was bucking the trend of the rest of the crypto market. But now you can see some of the things kind of popping back in green. Bitcoin up 1.12% sitting at 30579 ETH 1855, XRP 47.3. But none of those that I just mentioned had the same oomph recently as XLM. So that begs me to ask this question. I asked before, will the latest XRP move last or is this another failed pump? Let's replace XRP with XLM. Very curious. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. And Map, I know you're watching. Did you change your name yet again? Some of y'all out there in the comment section, I recognize you by photo because you changed your name how many darn times? But the last XRP move, majority of people said, hey, this move is not going to last. What we're going to say here is 10 cents. Will this move right now with XLM last? Will we go from 10 and move on the way up? Or are we going to talk 10, hey, we're not going to hold it. We're going to move back down. Seriously, let me know down below what you think. Bitcoin firm Coinbit suspends operations amidst custodian prime trust financial woes. I'm going to read off a few stats to you. They're going to be really, really bad stats. And this kind of tells you, I've been saying for a while that these companies, no one is doing good. Okay. Crypto volume just isn't there. And that's how these companies make their money, right? It's on the volume. However, due to regulatory challenges in Nevada, Coinbits has been compelled to temporarily suspend the majority of its services. The site is set back. The team remains optimistic that Prime Trust possesses sufficient Bitcoin to settle customer balances. So they use Prime Trust. This is Coinbits, okay? Prime Trust, though, is in deep, deep poopy. How deep poopy? Well, let's get to some numbers here. According to a court filing submitted by the 8th Judicial District Court in Las Vegas, Nevada Financial Institution Division disclosed that Prime Trust had a debt of $85.67 million to its clients. It's not that bad. Except the company only possessed $2.9 million to cover this amount. Oh my gosh, what do they have, like 2.5%? That's all you have? 2.5%? So people know are not going to be getting dollar to dollar. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on. This gets worse. Now, remember, this is for Prime Trust. They're a custodian. Recently, Gensler has been fighting about custodial rules for crypto. Listen to this. Additionally, Prime Trust owed $69.5 million in crypto to its clients, but only possessed $68.64, leaving a shortfall of 83.63 between crypto and fiat. So they don't even have one-to-one -one assets for crypto. And they're short on fiat as well. So now Coinbits is like, yeah, we have to suspend operations here and we're going to try to get your money back. Except we just found out from a Nevada court filing that the place they want to get their money back, specifically Bitcoin, they don't have it. Pennies to the dollar. That means for every dollar they have, they only have, what, two and a half cents. Whoa, that's bad. Here's that tweet from Coinbits. This is a thread we would never have wanted to write. We've been posting updates on our website and email, but we think it's most important to communicate directly to Bitcoin Twitter about what the Prime Trust meltdown means for Coinbits. Firstly, those of you who called Coinbit in our Prime Trust, whether or not you use Coinbits, our heart goes out to you. It's easy for Bitcoiners to dissolve themselves, yada, yada, yada. Long story short, still seeing some firms close. But again, these are the peripheral ones, right? We've already gotten through the heavy ripples. These are the ones that are not going to affect the market price-wise, but they're still newsworthy to show you what's going on. That's why I bring these stories. Fidelity joins Spot Bitcoin ETF race with fresh SEC filing. They're refiling, by the way, because they got rejected before by the SEC. This whole BlackRock thing is starting to put pressure on it. And we're going to see now who's going to be the race for the approval. All right. In the latest high profile traditional finance firm to join the race after BlackRock, made a splash with the mid June application Spot ETF, which opened the floodgates for others. Very true. For crypto fans, it's been a significant string of developments given BlackRock's reputation on Wall Street. Problem is, though, this is what everyone, Bitcoin, this is for Bitcoin ETFs. Yes, what happens to the rest of the market when Bitcoin does good? The rest of the market does good, right? But this is more direct support for Bitcoin. Will the alt Ethereum and the rest of the crew benefit from this? Sure. Crypto adoption, yeah. But more oomph, more oomph for Bitcoin on this one. Let's get to excellent price talk. 
What do I got up on the screen? Last couple days, and you can see it's been that battle at 10 cents. We had a couple times here where we were below that 10 cent mark, but quickly, quickly got back up. But the story has been held back under 10 and a half. Exxon just cannot break that and hold it. But you can see we're in that consolidation, right? Very narrow time frame, and it's getting very tightly consolidated here right at 10.1. We're going to keep an eye on it. We're going in the weekend, which normally is low, low volume. But remember, traditional markets are not open globally on the weekends, which means people that want juice, they might have a place to put their juice because crypto trades 24-7. And that's why we love it on this channel because news also breaks 24-7. That's why you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of this hot news. So will this recent XLM rally last Honestly, I'm happy just the fact that it's happening in the first place. Exxon has been beaten down lately, and none of the news that we've seen has done anything to propel price-wise. Then out of nowhere, we get a pump. Good, healthy one. Let's see, though, if we can hold above 10. I was talking to Virtual, yes, a viewer. I was talking to Virtual on the phone earlier, and we were talking about it, and we both were in agreement saying, hey, any victory at this point is a victory we will take, and a lot of us out there know that our favorite crypto projects recently have been very short of victories. Speaking of victories, well, lack thereof, yes, another firm is shutting down, but we're going to have some custodial problems. That's right. If they're that flipped with crypto and fiat, what is going to happen to all the holders in their platform? We're also going to have smaller platforms like this fall away. The bigger ones, I think, hey, I think they've fallen by now. I don't think we're going to see any more crazy big ones plummet unless someone does something really dumb Mashinsky-wise. Doquan-esque, if you may. But the smaller ones, yes. Further ripples in the pond from the FTX splash. Liquidity is still an issue in the global crypto market. Stable coin, right? You're not seeing as big a market cap as you used to. BUSD completely getting destroyed. TUSD depegging. Tether money printer go burr, but how long can they keep that up? USDC market cap has shrank, God, like worse than like someone going swimming in the pool, shrinkage down there. Yeah, USDC has shrunk quite a bit. Market cap, by the way, 28 billion. We used to be talking about USDC, 50 billion plus market cap. But since the banks in the US have collapsed, you know, the Silvergate, Silicon Valley, the S's, people have lost faith in where these stable coins are putting their reserves. So if the reserves are in banks, oh crap, there's some problems. But now what if the custodians are in trouble? That's right. Did the story earlier in the video, right? The custodian is in trouble, which now affects this firm. Trading volume is low, which is another problem. So now we're in that waiting phase, waiting for something big to happen. To pass time until, you know, the next thing, check out this video right here. If you want to see what I do with this bike, getting ready for fitness racing, that's this video right here. Now, until more news breaks, no, I'm not riding the road bike today. I'm recovering. You cool cats have a great rest of your day.